Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Thank you. Good morning. Our opening song is number 99. O come all you faithful. We'll do verses one and four again. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O oh, come, ye, O oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Adeste fidelis, mighty triumphantes, Veni, te veni, te in Bethlehem. Natum fidete, veni angelorum, veni te adoremus, veni te adoremus, Venite adore most hominum. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Destroy the back, are you? Way back. Way back. Not that far back. 
back. <laughs> no, one more ribbon over. Try that one. Oh God, whom the only innocents confessed and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking but by dying, grant we pray that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through our manner of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for those of the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Our soul, Our soul has, has been, been rescued, rescued like, a like a bird from the fowler's snare. snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their fury was inflamed against us. Our, Our soul has, has been, been rescued, rescued like, like a bird, bird from the fowler's fowler snare. snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us the torrent would have swept over us. Over us, then, would have swept the raging waters. Our, Our soul, soul has, has been, been rescued, rescued like, like a bird, bird from, from the fowler's snare. snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird by a bird from the fowler's, from the fowler's snare. snare. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and from His fullness we have all received. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod. That's what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had asserted from the Magi. Then was fulfilled with what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled since there were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am Father Joseph Paul Alban. Uh, my parents go to St. Bonds, and I'm just visiting. And I'm currently the pastor of a church in downtown Houston called Holy Rosary. Beautiful, beautiful church. And the people there are incredibly devoted to especially the Rosary and Our Lady. And so in the last six months, while as a Dominican, I pray the Rosary every day. And as a priest, I've always tried to be close to Our Lady been very inspired by my own congregation to just draw closer to her. And one of my favorite images of Our Lady, one that I've prayed with quite a bit, is the image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. If you don't know the image, uh, don't do it now, but look it up, you know, after Mass, pull it up on your phone or go home. But it's this beautiful Byzantine icon, and Our Lady is in the very center, holding the Christ child. And on either side of Our Lady is St. Michael and St. Gabriel. And they're holding the implements of Christ's death. On one side, the sponge and the spear, and on the other side, the cross and the nails. And Jesus has ran to his mother after seeing this so quickly that if you look closely at the image, one of his sandals is falling off because he so quickly runs to Our Lady for his own protection, because he's not excited, fearful in some way about what he knows will come. And I think that image can be a little striking or a little intense, the idea that a child would somehow have to see the horrors of the end of their life. And yet today, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents an incredibly challenging feast. And in truth, in the octave of Christmas, just two days ago, we celebrated the martyrdom of St. Stephen. Yesterday, while we didn't, St. John was not martyred, we did read about Christ's death and resurrection in the gospel. Today, the Holy Innocents, and tomorrow, St. Thomas Becket. Why so much death when we've just celebrated the birth of our Savior? The very beginning of the church, this feast was actually called the flight, out, the flight to Egypt. It wasn't the feast of the Holy Innocents. But I think Mother Church and her motherly instincts recognized that that flight out of Egypt came at a great cost to these children and their families. And that truly what it does is points to the fact that Jesus was not born just to be God on earth, but was born to die for our sins, that the Paschal mystery begins at conception, that the Paschal mystery is something that comes through all of Christ's life and that his whole life 
from his conception, his birth, to his death and resurrection, all point to our salvation. Now this feast, like I said, can be very challenging because we have to think about children who lost their lives, who were martyrs for the Lord. But I do think it shows us a few other really beautiful things. First, Christ was willing to be born into a very messy and very broken world. Christ allowed himself to come into the midst of our extreme brokenness. And so whatever is happening with any of us, whatever is happening in our families, whatever is happening in the world, Christ will make himself present in the midst of that mess. Secondly, it's okay to weep. Rachel, as we hear reflected, weeps for the loss of her children. It is okay, even in this season of joy, to mourn those things that we have lost, even knowing that God will make them all good. Jesus himself wept when he heard of his friend Lazarus' death. So for those of us that for this season can be challenging, it is quite okay to enter into that sadness. But most importantly, I think what we see today in the Feast of the Holy Innocents is that the love of the Lord outweighs any evil done in the world. The evil tyrant Herod took the lives of every boy under two in his jurisdiction. And Christ, through his life, death, and resurrection, was able to give every one of them a martyr's crown so that they can be with him forever. While we may not always see the correction in our own lives, while we may not see the love of God fix the brokenness before we see him face to face, we know this truth, that for those of us that trust enough in our Lord, those of us who run to Our Lady, that when we do that, the Lord really and truly will right every wrong, comfort every tear, and be with us in the midst of our own mess. Let us offer our prayers and praises to God, our Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop George Lucas, and for all people throughout the state of Nebraska and the Archdiocese of Omaha, that filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we may work together to share the love of Jesus with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Church of God, that we may welcome with joy him whom the Immaculate Virgin conceived by a word and wondrously brought to birth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For progress in bringing about peace between Russia and Ukraine and between Israel and Hamas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that through the mystery of the birth of Jesus Christ, they may find peace in mind and body, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn the loss of a loved one, that they may find peace in knowing that God the Son became man to show us the way to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially those who are near death, that they may be ready to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcomed by him into the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died this past year, that they may rejoice with Jesus in the halls of heaven, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the families of our 
St. Isidore's Parish, that receiving Christ, they may learn also to welcome him in the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us now pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer this Mass this morning for Jane Steffensmeyer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Clara Meisenberg. She's Betty uh, Vodova's mother. She just died last night. So we pray for her and for her family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you who gave the holy innocents the crown of martyrdom, we trust all of our prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's also pray for Oren Stephan, uh, uh, Stefani. He's being buried today from our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your devoted servants, and purify us as we faithfully serve these your mysteries, by which you grant justification even to those who lack understanding, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in us and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Highest. Blessed is he who comes 
In the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Esidore and the Holy Innocents, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. 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 Good to have you here. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come believe spiritually into my heart. I embrace you if you have already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 86, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs implore. 
Wild fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His love. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Run, young virgin, mother and child, holy so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Side. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, abundant salvation to your faithful as they receive your holy gift on the feast day of these your saints, who, though still unable to profess your Son in speech, were crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You noticed when he came back up, he had the book open and ready, so that I wouldn't have to look through it all again. So thank you very much. So I am Father Joseph Paul Albin. I'm a Dominican friar. Uh, my parents have lived here for apparently 18 years, I found out today. Uh, they go to St. Bonds, but every time I visited, I'd come to St. Isidore's and love to be here. Currently a pastor at a church, like I said, in downtown Houston, Holy Rosary. We are a wildly busy church. Uh, we have two daily masses and seven Sunday liturgies, confession, twice a day, Monday through Saturday. So pray for me. Uh, pray for uh, my vicar, pray for my people, but please especially just pray for vocations. Uh, if you know any young people that you think might have the calling, tell them. 
Uh, it's really largely through people being told that the possibility of priesthood and religious life is a real thing that they feel like they might actually be able to do it. So don't only pray for vocations, but also tell young people that it is a good thing to do and that they very likely might be called. May God bless you, and I will be here again tomorrow. So see you then too. And I thank Father Joe always for letting me come. Uh, he is another very, very busy priest that I pray for. And so thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with, your, with spirit. your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Final hymn is number 102, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all the nations rise, join the triumphs of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adore, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time before him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Filled in flesh thy heart is see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Today's morning mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.